Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another How to Beat. Today, we are going to be discussing Flow on the Rees. And now, this deck has been getting a lot of popularity nowadays, uh, specifically to the fact that there are no um, expensive secret rare cards to pull from Burst of Destiny. So, this deck is relatively cheap if you already have a lot of the staples, and it is fairly easy to play. Now, the deck has some issues. Um, mostly consistently wise but it is a very solid deck i've been playing this deck for a little while now it can actually play through a lot of boards it can establish a lot of scary boards that a lot of decks just don't have tools to deal with and i figured it would be a good time to return to the how to beat series because of course it's a new meta there are new decks we finally have actual stuff to talk about so this is going to be the very first episode for season two i guess you can say and yeah if you want to see another deck on uh, how to beat to uh, give you tips and tricks in the main and side boards on how to beat it then let me know in the comment section down below all right so to beat flunder is really to understand flunder this deck has a lot of you know things it can do but it's all very easy so we're going to talk about the archetype itself first so we have to start off with the level 1 monsters. Now they have 4 level 1 monsters that all do the same with an extra effect. So let's talk about the effects that they have in common first. When they leave the field, a phase up, which is important, they are banished. They all have the same effect. When you summon a winged beast once per turn and this card is banished, you can add it to the hand. So the Robina, for example, if it leaves the field, is banished. Then if you summon another one, like a Glen, it gets back to the hand. So they build a lot of resources really quick because all the resources they use by summoning, they get back. Then they all have an additional effect. When they are summoned, they do something and then you can normal summon again. This deck is a very normal summon heavy focus deck and all their cards support this. So let's talk about Robina first, which is arguably the most important one. It's kind of a debate between it or Eglin. When Robina is normal summoned, you can add a level 4 or lower winged beast from your deck to your hand. It doesn't even restrict to flow on the race cards. It can just add a level 4 or lower um, winged beast. But you cannot special summon her to turn your activate that effect. Um, they all have that restriction, which is very important. So Robina adds one, level 4 or lower. Then we have Eglin, which I think is the more important one. Uh, when Eglen is normal summoned, you can add, let me look at the very specific text, a level 7 or higher winged beast from your deck to your hand. Again, doesn't lock into Flow on the Reeds, so there are a couple of very cool cards you can pick up with the Eglen. And then we have the two less important ones, but they do definitely have a role in the deck. We have Stree, when he is normal summoned, you can banish a card from the graveyard and then normal summon again. Uh, this does target, which is important, and it does need to resolve in order to get the additional summon. Just like Eglen needs to add to get the additional summon and Robina. Uh, it is kind of cool because they have Tukan. Where when he's normal summoned, you can add a banished uh, Flow and Reese card back to your hand. So you can add uh, an Eglen that you have already bound, banished and returned once this turn. Or an M-Pen that's banished, which is nice. Or the trap or the spell, which can come up. Um, so those are... Basically extra, they don't really add that much to the deck. They don't let you add the pieces you are searching for, but they do give you recursion uh, with, for example, the trap card, which I will talk about in a little bit. So those are the four level one monsters. Then they have two boss monsters. One is Snow, which we just will not talk about because it's not relevant at all. And the other one is Fluanderies and Mpen. Now, Mpen is a level 10 monster, so not seven, but he is seven or higher, so I can add him. And he has a couple of cool effects. So the first effect that he has is when he is Tribute Summoned, you can add a Flow on the Reef spell or trap from your deck to your hand. Then you can Normal Summon again. So he does have the same gimmick as that. He has another effect that Special Summoned Monsters in Attack Position cannot activate their effects. So it's not like Skill Drain, you simply cannot activate it at all. Which is very broken. And to finish this card off, he has a third effect when he bat battles doesn't matter if he attacks or is attacked, you can banish a card from your hand and let the other monster lose half its attack and effect. Three effects. <laughs> Quite a lot. Um, this one actually doesn't banish when he leaves the field, which is relevant because if this monster gets removed, the only way to get it back to your hand is to banish it with Stry and then add it back with Dukan. Um, 
but that's definitely a line of play that you can do. Uh, but mostly this guy is used for the floodgate effect and the fact that you can add a spell or trap. So this is mainly what the flow under the sport will end on. Then I have to talk about arguably the best card in the entire deck and basically the only reason why this entire deck is even playable which is flow on the reason the magnificent map now this is a very important field spell so let me just read it for you guys during the main phase you can reveal one level one important flow on the reason monster in your hand and vanish one flow on the reason card with a different name from your deck then immediately after this effect resolves normal summon the revealed monster so a lot to take in already so you can maybe probably see how it works at all you have robina and the field spell in your hand you reveal robina banish iglen normal summon robina as an additional normal summon so you can normal summon again after that just your normal normal summon uh, robina triggers the normal summon and iglen triggers because he's in the banish zone and you normal summon a winged beast and uh, this is basically the main way to get any flow on the race you need so if you open any level one you can add either a Robina, or you can add a Stree, or you can add a Glen, whatever you are missing, and just proceed to play. Uh, something very important as well is it can just banish a Flow Under card. So in case you do already have Tukan, or you already have the pieces you are missing for, you're looking for, you can just banish a spell or a Glen and add it early to your hand with the Tukan, which is something that definitely can come up. But the main real way is to just get the missing pieces into your hand. The Magnificent map has another effect, because of course it has. And it is very good, and basically the main way of interrupting. In your opponent's turn, if they normal summon a monster, you can normal summon a monster. So you can storm, normal summon Robina from your hand, nor add Eklen, normal summon Eklen, and at level 7 or higher, summon that as well, because it all just resolves after each other. Which is very nice. Then, another spell card we have to talk about, which is a one-off in the deck. Flew on the reason the unexplored wins. Now this card is maybe a little bit difficult to understand, but it is very, very powerful. So the unexplored wins says, you can conduct tribute summons that require two tributes by sending one monster you control and one card your opponent controls to the graveyard instead of tributing, but it's still treated as a tribute summon. This card can basically out any card in your opponent's field because it doesn't target, it just sends it to the grave. It does affect it, which is important. But yeah, if your opponent has a set card that they are not using and you have this card, you can just tribute the monster on your field or send it to the grave and then send their card to the grave. Or a monster or a field spell. This guy can tribute Mystic Mine, which is very, very cool. And it has a second effect because of course it has. Um, during your main phase, you can reveal up to two Winged Beast monsters in your hand, place them on the bottom of your deck in any order, then draw cards equal to the number of cards placed. You can only use that effect once per turn. So in case you have a lot of your le high level monster or a couple of doubles, uh, you can just put them on the bottom and redraw your hat, which is very, very solid. And then the last card we do have to talk about is the trap card Foundries in the Dreaming Town. Now, this card simply says during the main phase, you can normal summon a level four or lower from your hand. This is huge for in your opponent's turn. You can, in case you don't have the field spell or they just straight up go to battle phase without normal summoning, you can just normal summon anyway and completely disrupt their board, which is very nice. It has a second effect because, again, of course it has. When you tribute summon a level 7 or higher monster, well, this card is in your graveyard, you could banish this card, change all monsters your opponent controls to face down defense position. You can only use that effect once per turn. So what you normally do, your opponent has like a little bit of a field and you don't have the field spell. Um, you activate Dreaming Town, summon Robina, effect, summon Eclem, add one, uh, normal summon the thing, banish the trap. And when it is banished, you can add it back with Tukan later, which is nice. Recovery. So now that you kind of know a little bit more about the flow on the Rees, um, the real way this deck kind of plays is just normal summon effect, add one, normal summon effect, add one, a normal summon effect, do something, summon a pen, add one, effect and pen, normal summon another one. And the way it's really nice because they can chain block, especially with the field spell. Um, you can ash Robina and it will not resolve. You can ash Eklen and it will not resolve and not get the additional normal summon. But if they have a banished flow on the Reese card, they can chain block it. Means so, for example, you have the field spell, you banish Robina, you banish Eklen. Your normal summon Robina effect, chaining 2 will be the Eklen in the banished zone, so you cannot ash the Robina, which is basically their main way of 
protecting their own effects. And it's kind of a cool trick because the effects to get them back from the banish pile is not mandatory. So you can leave a couple in there if needed so that in your opponent's turn you can chain lock again, which is very nice. And it's actually a little bit more in-depth than you would think. So now that you know the flow on the Reese cards, we have to talk about three very other important other cards that they play in their archetype. Uh, the first one is Mist Valley Apex Avion, which is a level 7 winged beast monster, so it can be added with Eglen. And you all probably know this from the Bird Up deck. Um, once per chain, when a card is activated, quick effect, you can target one Mist Valley card you control, return the target to the hand, and if you do negate the activation. So it's basically just a negate uh, that they can search, it can come up, which is very cool. Uh, especially if they have M if they have M pen and you try to extend, they could just summon this and then negate any of your extenders or any of your monsters that would potentially out M pen, which is very solid. Another card we have to talk about is Rise of the Mega Monarch. Now he can be tribute summoned by tributing one tribute summoned monster, which can't come up, I guess. If he's tribute summoned, target one card on the field and one card in either player's graveyard. Also, if this card was tribute summoning by tributing a wind monster, you could target an additional card on the field. Place the first targets on the top of the deck in any order. Also, after that, return the additional target to the hand. Being able to spin two cards on the field by tributing a wind monster and one card in the grave is insane. And this is basically the main way that this deck will try to break your board. By, in your turn, after you summon a couple of bodies, just bounce two, one to the top deck, one to your hand. Often the one bounce to the hand will be an extra deck monster or a token, in case you're playing Sword Soul. And even DD Crowing anything. Uh, but this card is very solid because he can also target cards on the fields of the flow on the respair player itself. So it can bounce itself back to the hand, which is nice, so you can do it again next turn. Uh, which definitely can come up. Um, definitely something to be looking out for. And the last card that we do have to talk about that's in archetypal-ish is the Barrier Statue of the Stormwind. Uh, this is a level 4 winged beast this means that robina can add this and one of the plays they usually do for example if you just have the field spell and a robina you can field spell banish eglen normal robina add barrier statue uh, eglen adds itself back to the hand so chaining one will be robina chaining two will be eglen eglen adds itself back robina searches one normal eglen eglen effect add and pen normal summon and pen search a flannery's trap or spell whichever you don't have and then after that, you can normal summon a level 4 Wings Beast, and then you normal summon the Barrier Statue. So you have M Pen, Barrier Statue, and the Trap Set, which is basically the entire setup of the deck. So now that you kind of know the gist of what all the cards in the deck really do, there's a couple of cards that we do have to talk about that the deck will play in order to protect or play through your stuff. Uh, one very important card is, of course, Dark Ruler No More, which is being mained in a lot of card decks this time around. Um, Dark Ruler No More will basically just allow them to start normal summoning and start breaking through your field with M Pen. And after the Dark Ruler has resolved, your monsters will probably be in attack position, so they cannot activate with the Eglen. And the Eglen will be very difficult to out because you can just have your attack anyway. Which is their main way of breaking boards. Another card they play is Book of Moon. Book of Moon is really useful in case they affect Failure or Imperm, one of the Robinas or the Eglens. You can just chain Book of Moon and it resolves. Do note that when it is face down, it cannot be banished um, because they only banish when they leave the field face up. Another card is Chalice. Just wanted to say there are a lot of flow on the restacks running Chalice right now, so some of it you do have to know. And because the graveyard really doesn't matter at all, they all probably will main dimension shifter, which will be an insane deck uh, or an insane tech choice because dimension shifter really screws over a lot of decks this meta. And yeah, they just genuinely don't really care for the graveyard. Um, another thing they can play is the Dogmatica engine because M Pen and all the monsters they don't really care what you summon, they just let you normal summon again. So I think that they can do is just normal summon an Ecclesia again. But running that package kind of conflicts with Shifter, and I think Shifter is definitely the better way to go. So yeah, now that you kind of knew about the main deck. In the extra deck will probably be fitter. Do be aware that they are all level 1. So in case you know they don't really use their effects. They can sometimes attempt to go for a Zeus. Which can come up. But don't really depend on it. Flow on the race players will never really go into their extra deck. So now that you kind of know what the deck does. And kind of know the gist of it. How do you stop it? Well first of all Ash is a very important card against the deck. Because if you negate the Robina. They... Cannot normal summon again. A card that is way more important than Robina definitely is a gland to get that additional 
body to the hand because if they just have a couple of level ones on the field it doesn't do anything but the only real thing you care about is Eglen. so ashing the Eglen is really really cool uh, except of course they are able to chain block it um, which can you know throw dirt to your plants so be aware that ash is very solid but cannot always be activated in the right moment Another card that can be activated in the right moment are both Imperm and Vader, which are very important cards against the deck. But this is the exact reason why they play Book of Moon. So even though they are very good to do, and you should always just either Imperm the Eggland or the Robina, beware of the fact that they can chain Book of Moon. And maybe it's a better idea to keep the Imperm, for example, uh, for the M-Pen so you can just play out your turn. Yeah, that's basically what you can do for their turn. So for your turn, cards that you should probably be able to play. Um, it's Forbidden Chalice. It's a very good card when they when you normal summon a monster and they normal summon with the field spell. You can just chalice it. Or when they normal summon with the trap, you can just chalice it. Droplets, same. And Ashes, also the same cards that you can just use in your turn. And again, Ash is something, if they have the setup, they can chain lock it. But something like Droplet or something like Chalice. Uh, droplet discarding a spell is very solid to do because they will not be able to chain Book of Moon, which is very funny because they don't really care about not being able to respond to monsters. They do be care about being able to respond with spells. So Droplet for a spell is very, very solid to do. Now we can also talk about cards in the sideboard that you um, can or cannot do to kind of win the match a little bit better. So one of the most important cards is to run this evenly matched. Um, if you go to battle phase and they have a trap set, they basically just have to activate the trap in order to get to uh, the Apex Avian. So declaring battle phase will probably force out their trap very early and get a negate going. So this is also kind of a way to play around and maybe if you have a dark ruler, don't have evenly, you can just say main, main phase, battle phase. They will normal summon the Apex in order to negate evenly and then you can just negate dark ruler no more. And then all you have to care about is their field spell, which is very solid. Uh, but evenly itself is also very good in case they don't force out anything you could just banish everything on the field they will probably only leave an m-pen on the field and one m-pen is dealable with if you summon a monster in defense maybe dpe in defense can out it for example two very 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 important cards that i cannot stress enough that are very good against this deck it's twin twister and cosmic cyclone their field spell requires you to normal summon a monster and their trap requires you to be in the main phase so if you twin twister in the step by phase they cannot activate the trap, and you can just destroy the field spell. Same with Cyclone, although it only targets one, you can either banish the field spell or the trap in case they have it in the standby phase. And then they just cannot chain it and other resources are gone and you are just free to deal with whatever is left on the board. Um, yeah, Dark Ruder no more, another card that you can main already, that you can sight now to deal with the Empen and the Barrier Statue, which can be really important. So yeah, it's kind of difficult, you know, can your deck deal with and pen and with barrier statue and that's kind of the question and whether you want to have more outs in your side deck or not and then we have to talk about two specific cards the first one would mask of restrict which is a continuous trap and in case you go first you can set this card which is very fun to do um your opponent can attribute cards which is very cool do note that if they do have the continuous spell they can send your mask of restrict ironically to the graveyard so that kind of outs the entire purpose um but that's a one-off in the deck that they have to search so even though people say don't side against it they can out it they do have to have the out and the main way to search the spells is through mpen and if they can through it when they can't mpen so mask of restrict could be an option if you do have a lot of flunderies players at your local to definitely go check that out and another card that we do have to talk about is zombie world there's a lot of decks right now drytron virtual world that can run beatrice or that can run anything that discards you can run Necro Banshee and Zombie World. And Zombie World has a very cool extra effect that neither player can tribute to summon monsters except zombies. And the cards in your hand are winged beasts. So Zombie World completely shuts it off. And also because the way of the continuous spell works, the monster that you summon is still considered a tribute summon. And you cannot do that because it's not a zombie. So Zombie World completely cancels the deck out, which is very, very important. Then after that, we have a lot of floodgates you could probably be playing there could be only one impossible for them to beat uh, summon limit impossible for them to beat in them if you just chain it um, stuff like that cards that just do not let them play overall this deck is solid 
but this deck is very beatable. First of all, it has a couple of consistency issues that until they get the new support will still be there. And next to that, yeah, the deck just dies to a lot of stuff really easily, like failure, imperm, and if they just don't have the out or don't have a good hand, they just pass. So yeah, that's Flounderies. Do you have any tips to beat the deck? Do you understand the deck a little bit better now? Let me know in the comment section down below. And again, don't forget to let me know what you would like to see on the how to beat next. I'm thinking about covering Sword Soul next because it's very popular, but also Lyrilisk Tri Brigade is up high on the list. So let me know what you want. Now, yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.